Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. I'm Callie here with Michael and today we're going to talk about The Fog Escape from Paradise. The Fog is a game for one to four players, takes over 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game The Fog you are going to be Basically a bunch of, I guess, what, like tribesmen or like villagers, villagers yeah. attempting to get onto the boats from the docks and escape the ever-growing fog that is circling the island, and which will eventually take up the entire island. And yep. if your villagers get lost in the fog, they will be lost forever, never to be rescued. And so you're trying to get your guys onto the boats. Through limited spaces, but you do have special abilities and movement points that you'll be utilizing to try to get your guys to the boats and leave everyone else behind. <laughs> your characters might even have special abilities of their own that make their abilities cheaper than the average ability, but you can still do any ability that you'd like. You'd be jumping over obstacles or squeezing through people because mm -hmm. there's a ton of people, a small narrow passageway, and you're all trying to escape into the docks, get on the boat before the end of the game. Meanwhile, the fog is slowly creeping up. Well, not that slowly, actually, pretty quickly, and you'll see as we discuss the game. So let's go ahead and get into the game The Fog Escape from Paradise. Uh, how to set it up, then how to play, and of course, our review. To set up the game The Fog Escape from Paradise, you're going to start by gathering the main game board and placing it out in front of all players. Then you'll take the fog marker tracker and place it at the very bottom of the board. Based on the number of players in the game, we'll have a certain number of rounds, and you'll take the gray cube and place that on either the 9 or the 10 space. Additionally, based on the number of players, you will take the cubes of their color and place it on the zero track, which indicates their score for the game. They can go all the way up to 50, in which case you'll have these cubes up here, which will traverse to 50 and then to 100, thusly increasing their score. Each player is going to get a game board, which will solidify the different types of abilities that a player can use. And in addition, they're going to be getting a tracker board, which will indicate how many uh, points of uh, movement. Uh, movement they can yeah. utilize. And each of the different types of movement requires a certain number. So when you're spending one, two, and three, that'll let you do a specific thing. Once you get to zero, that will be the end of your turn. Go ahead and give them that tracker, place their marker on the zero, and of course their main game board. After that, you're then going to take the points of the game. You'll take a certain number of these scoring markers, four of them, grab them, drop them onto the ground, and then based on highest to lowest, you'll or place board. them, <laughs> or board, and place them from highest to lowest going from top Top to bottom. So if you've got a six, six, a five, and a three, you'll place the six first, the next six, then the five, then the three, indicated based on the boats and their placement. Uh, they're also going to take these scoring markers and place them on the top of the boats, and it will go from six to five to four to three to two, and uh, that will be additional points you'll get yep. as you get your guys on the boat. And quick note, the green one only goes to three rather than down to two. Yes. Uh, there's also deluxe versions of the game. We have the deluxe pieces here, which will have little uh, rocks and uh, bushes and pieces of logs. Three, three dimensional rather than token form. So in the box here, there is the basic tokens for the game. And uh, then there's just the matter of setting up the game board for the characters and the players. So you'll set up all of the obstacles first. So randomly choosing from the bushes, the branches and the rocks and placing them depending on the row. Uh, the first number in the row is going to be how many obstacles you'll randomly place in that row. There's a couple other rules to follow. You can't have more than overall two obstacles next to the forested area. And in addition, you can't have a certain number of uh, obstacles that are right next to each other. So you can't have three in a row between the rows or and only a certain number of two together. And once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and place all the characters out, and that's randomly, I believe, right? Yes, the villagers are randomly as well, and you'll use the second number to determine how many empty spaces there should be left in that row after you've placed all of the villagers in the empty spaces. Perfect, and after you've done that, you'll begin the starting of the game, which is actually going to be a draft, just before you start actually trying to move your characters onto the boats to avoid the fog. So you'll need the round tracker board set up. The first player will place their color token on the first spot, second player, third player, so on. And actually the fourth player, or second player if you're playing two player, will be the one to go first and draft first, and you'll draft in reverse order. Then you go ahead and take this little last cube here, place it on the first marker space for the first player, and begin the game. Mm -hmm. 
So the first phase of the game is actually a drafting phase. It's part of the game in which basically all of these characters will start outside of these bases here and you're going to have a colored base. So if you're playing black, you're going to have the black bases. Pink is the pink bases. Blue is the blue bases. And what's going to happen is uh, based on the order from uh, the lowest player, the last player to the first player, you'll be drafting. So I'll say, okay, I want the red guy. I'm going to take my black base as the black player and place this guy into that space and place it back down into the space it was currently at. And since you're trying to get your villagers to the boats, it's, you're likely going to choose the characters that are closer to the boats to start with, but eventually you'll have to choose some of the ones that are far away. Yeah, as a tip, <laughs> always go for the front and always go for the front uh, with the characters of the same color closest to their boat because you want the characters of the same color closest to their boat. Mm -hmm. uh, after you've done that, the next player will go ahead and select one of the characters, place their base underneath and rinse and repeat until all players have placed out all of the bases underneath all of the different characters in the game board, which will follow to the next phase of the game. Next, you'll be taking turns taking a movement. So you'll look at the cube on the movement board to see who goes first and that'll determine the order of the game for the whole game. It's a, it's a rotating um, cube so you'll always have whoever's turn is next. So uh, yeah, so. if it's yellow, then black, then blue, then pink, it'll go yellow, black, blue, pink. But there's an interesting thing that happens. After that, the pink player will get an extra turn. Um, but when that happens, also the fog space will yeah, move up. Yeah, right in between there, that's the fog moving up. <laughs> icon. Uh, but how you work a turn is... Yes. So on your turn, you ha will get seven action movement points. And based on what characters you have and what you want to do, you'll dispense those actions to different characters that, that you can move even. Sometimes you may not be able to move certain characters because there's no empty spot for them to move to. And the cheat sheet board there does give a pretty good idea of how to move. You always move either to the boat and sometimes you can move sideways except for the one movement point you can always move any direction for that one uh move for one movement point in addition the icons will tell you different things like if you can do this action when you're in the water so on the shoreline or the water or if it has a different value point when you're in the shore or the water in addition, uh, it will have different, the cost of that action. So whether it's one, three, or four, and in parentheses, you'll notice there's a different number, and that's the cost for that specific villager who has that ability. So, so for instance, this yep. guy here, he actually is able to bump, and he has a little bump symbol, which means that normally to bump, you'd have to bump one, and you could bump another, and another would cost three. But because she has this symbol on her, she yep. can only cost two to do so. Once you've spent all of your movement points, that's it. Your turn is over and you'll move the action cube forward and the next player will take their turn and so on and so forth. And there's quite a few abilities. There's going to be these eight that you can utilize in the game, which I'll just go ahead and talk about. The first one is you can move into any one space that you want as long as it is empty. This one over here will let you uh, basically swap with your character and another character for three. Um, and of course, if you're past this shallow area, it's only going to cost you one. Uh, this area here is going to let you push a character, which then pushes a character and another character for three. Uh, this one lets you jump over a character. This one over here lets you jump over terrain. This one lets you squeeze through characters and terrain. This one here is going to be a plus one which means if you move with this character you can move an additional plus one once per turn and over here this one is a number three character which means if you have a three in that character you can do either the pushing or squeezing i should say and the jumping over terrain very very mm -hmm. useful and then over here just explains certain actions like moving across onto these boating areas here and you'll be spending those costs moving down this board getting to zero the next player will take their turn the next player will take their turn all while just attempting to get your characters onto the boats of the different colors and um the characters have have to go into certain character spaces based on the ones that they are. So yes. same character with same uh, symbol. And also if you can get that character onto the same color, that's a benefit. You yes. can also have two different characters on the same space as long as the first character is a different color other than the color of the boat. So a red dude can go on a dude space on the blue boat, but then a blue guy must go on top of that character, not the other way around. There's also an empty space at the very bottom of the boats, mm -hmm. which will explain how many characters can go there. And uh, you can also score bonus points by getting your characters there in addition to the color, which will score you additional four points at the end of the game. And the game will basically end when the fog reaches zero. And in addition, you'll get extra points when you are one of the first people to get a 
named character in yeah, you'll get these little tokens okay. here as your characters show up the first character yeah. will get six the second player who gets a character there will get five etc etc but yes once you get to zero here this fog is going to be based off of this little yellow marker on this board here it'll be moving up and up and up and your characters will get lost in the fog once they are covered by it thusly no longer being able to move and you'll lose points based on yeah. the end of the game where they are located on this board here and once this game triggers an, an, a zero here, you're gonna score points. And there's four different ways to score points here. One is you get four points for each of your characters on the boat of the correct color and um, area. Now, another one here is you'll get bonus points for the area in which you place your character. Mm -hmm. The next character one here is you get negative points for each of your characters in the um, fog, fog <laughs> area. And finally, you'll get a bonus points for the characters that you get onto your boats uh, before anybody else. Yeah. And you add all those up, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, The Fog, Escape from Paradise. So, what did we think of The Fog? Well, it is a game that has two components, the drafting and the movement, and both are really important. Even though the drafting is pretty quick, it's a really vital component of the game, because there are certain things that, especially after your first game, you'll notice that you want uh, in the characters, such as maybe you want kind of a variety of colors so that you have more chances to get onto the right color boat. Maybe you want one, the red ones to be closer to the red boat and so on and so forth. Maybe you want your character to be kind of in a row so you can get that bump action and get them all moving for less movement points. There so are so three <laughs> different important aspects to drafting. One is close to the boats. The next one is color to color boat. So if you have a blue guy, you want that blue guy to be as close to the blue boat as possible and that is close up to back and then that third thing is the type of ability that the character has right so if the character is able to move three spaces or four if an extra space when moving basic or being able to squeeze those are all vital things that you need to think about and that's my order specifically personally for how i would draft in this game the very far guys at the very back are obviously the ones you want to avoid having to use because those are going to cost you more movement points to get to the front mm -hmm. so if you can get all of you guys at the very top here it's going to be the most benefit to you even if you don't get all your characters to the right color boat certain character types are also going to be worth more points than others so that's another thing i'd say to consider as maybe a fourth and final element yeah so you have the main queen type character who's going to score mm -hmm. you six points or maybe even seven if uh the, the depending on your luck enough. yeah <laughs> um and then they're just going to move down from there based on the the more i guess the common villager gal uh, which is going to score you the least amount of points next to just getting your guys on the boats and not having a very specific space for them and they're yes hanging onto the boat they're like please let me go <laughs> and you're going to want to kind of visualize your turn as other players are taking it what they're going to do what you want to do how you can kind of mess them over by moving their characters back or pushing them in ways that you don't they do not want to go thusly costing them more actions and giving yourself a benefit to your actions it's all action management it's all control uh, this game plays similar to a game called quicksand that i played a long time yeah. ago yeah. Uh, the only difference is in the quicksand you don't yeah, hidden movement yeah, yeah it's hidden movement <laughs> you know what your character is but nobody else does and you're all moving all the characters trying to get one to the end and that player who gets to the end is the winner which is hopefully yours based yeah. on your movement abilities this one you know your characters mm -hmm. you know where they need to go and you know where your opponents need to go you might be moving some of the other characters especially when bumping but generally you're you're really focused on your own characters. Yeah, I, I, to the end of the game, you kind of focus on the other opponents as well because <laughs> there's less spaces available for the boats. Um, less, swapping and yeah, and getting certain them out characters of the way. you'll want <laughs> to get on certain areas, and you'll know, okay, my friend who's got a, a red villager girl, and so do I. There's only one space left. I need those five points more than I need those three points. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I swap with her. And maybe if I bump her and then move myself in, that's or, gonna give me more chance. Or use another character to kind of block them, force them to jump and spend a bunch of action points doing that. So it's all about control, action, movement, uh, area control. It's, 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 it's kind of a little bit of a mixture of a few different themes. But yeah, so Quicksand is what really, really stuck struck out to me when I was playing this game. Um, we used to play that game a lot. Oh, too. we did yeah. a lot, a lot. It does play different, so it is very, it's very it's it's not the same game. But if you yeah. played one, you'll kind of understand the concept of how to play the mm -hmm. other. I love the idea of the different pieces on the board and how you can arrange them and where you place them. I like the idea of the boats always having different values and and of course the ability to get bonus points and getting them first at a cost of maybe losing your guys into the fog it's a race you're always threatened by whether or not your pieces are going to make it players can swap with you and push you into the fog which is deadly and you feel that the theme comes out very well you do feel like a bunch of characters jam-packed into a little um like a little 
what's the word? Like funnel. It's a funnel <laughs> of a bunch of trees and, and bark, and you're like pushing it and throwing each other off to try and get onto these boats before the fog takes you. And it does an excellent job of that. The fact that you can all use all the different types of abilities yeah, to that's the game, really good. you never are going to be like, oh, I can't use this one because my character doesn't have it. It's just going to cost you more. <laughs> that's all. But you can still do it. <laughs> yep. And some of your characters will have a benefit to being cheaper, and you have to kind of think about that all, all the while. So even when you're not playing the game, you are playing the game. Even when it's not your turn, you're still devising how you want to take your turn. So I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it. Basically, the intensity of the game comes through in, in the theme and how it's meshed together with the mechanics where you're like, ah, there's that, some of some panic moments sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, the artwork is great. I really, really like it. I love the box art. Uh, the quality of the game is very nice. This is a prototype, so I expect it to probably be even yeah. more, even better. I do suggest getting the little 3D pieces. I think these They're provide, really cool. provide and, a nice element and to And they it. provide a lot of differentiation between the villagers and the obstacles, which is important for the different movement types. Yeah, and I think the game does provide enough replayability with different stylizations as to the different types of points and the characters. Now, yes, the boat is going to always have the same characters from the top to the bottom. There's always going to be the same number of characters, but how you choose to draft, where they're placed, when they're placed, it's all going to be relevant to the game. What characters you get and how you move them along the board is also extremely important as well. And what I really liked about the scoring, too, is that we were all really close together at the end. Even though we had really different strategies, some people left some villagers behind at the beginning. Others took longer but managed to get all their villagers across. Some were, you were really focused on getting all your characters trying to get onto the boats first. So. Yeah, and I, and I have most of mine in the red. Alicia had hers all going to the blue. blue. I was a mix. Uh, yeah, the, the variety, <laughs> variety does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And being the last people to get on the boat does not mean you lose the game. Nope. If you plan accordingly and you can get all your characters on the boat, it does not matter if you're the first there, the last there. It's about how many people you can get on the boats, not lose negative points towards, mm -hmm. and then um, in what spaces you can get them on. And based on how we drafted, that makes a huge difference as well. Yeah, I don't know. A really close scoring game though regardless of all the variation yes overall the fog is well done really looks nice the quality of the game the artwork of the game the different two aspects of the game that are games in and of themselves when you put them together forms this really cohesive and interesting thing that I haven't seen before as far as how drafting works and pushing people onto this boat. And I, my, my biggest thing about this game is the theme and the mechanics flow in so work, well together. They, they work together. function <laughs> very well. And uh, the intensity of the game when you're moving across works well in addition. Um, some a little caveats from me first, negatives okay. as far as that goes. Uh, you need to remember that you have to only move into spaces that you can you can get to and that has to be uh, blank spaces uh, so it took us a bit of time to understand how all the different spaces worked or how all the different um uh, movement worked uh, so mm -hmm. in order to jump over a player you need to have an empty space across from that player if you want to squeeze through two characters there has to be an empty space between those two uh, characters or the two different pieces of terrain you can't just simply go squeeze 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 one two three four yeah. seven and, yeah. and get there you have to actually have empty spaces uh, detailing those specific types of movement uh, and you have to kind of prepare for that in addition to and realize that a lot of spaces at the very beginning of the game uh, in the space there is going to be very blocked. limited very very limited yeah. and you have to kind of make uh, your way through with just whatever is available to you. You might have to areas. move some of your middle guys to get some of your back guys out. <laughs> and you might lose some characters to yep. the fog. In fact, mm -hmm. people will. It just depends on who. And uh, that plays a big role on how you chose to draft and what movement was available for you in the game. Um, but other than those little things, as far as movement goes, once you understand the basic concept of how the game works, it plays very well. Yeah, I'd just like to add that there are other elements that we didn't add, but you can, including the timer, as well as there's a solo mode to the game that we uh, yeah, did not didn't play. Try. No. <laughs> uh, this game, is, in my opinion, it plays really well with as many players as you can possibly get your hands on. I think four players is the only way to play this game. If you can play it, three players work fine as well, but uh, more players equals better. And we had a ton of ton, ton of ton of fun playing this game in that way. But anyways, thank you guys. Let's go ahead and outro this out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Fog Escape from Paradise. If you're interested in the game, check out the link down below in the description. There's also a like button, a comment button, and if you'd like, you can go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification button as well. Check out our stuff on Patreon for $1 a month. That helps us with our Discord, our live streams, etc., etc., etc. Speaking of the live stream, join us every Sunday, 6.30 Pacific time on Facebook and Twitch to watch us play games 
It's just like this one. <laughs> In fact, we are playing this game this Sunday as well as Athanasia. So you can see us play The Fog and maybe it'll help you determine if that's something you like to pick up for this game when it comes out on Kickstarter in March. So you have an opportunity to kind of see what the game is like and get an idea if it's something that you'd be interested in picking up. And of course, the last thing is, of course, the website. Uh, there's a giveaway there, live stream links, blog posts, and all that good stuff that you can check out. Uh, Moonshell should be already mostly delivered for all of you guys. And if you haven't taken a look at Moonshell, uh, it's my wife's game. She made it and it's available on our website unfilteredgames.com or moonshellgame.com where you can see uh, uh, our puzzle game, our yep. mermaid puzzle <laughs> game. If you're interested in puzzle games, then that's a place where you can go ahead and check it out, see if you'd like to pick up uh, one of the very few remaining copies left. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you, you guys, guys next time. time.